Hi everyone, I just wanted to take the opportunity today to introduce a new project that I'm going to start working on. So it's the start of a new year, it's 2019, which is really exciting. And towards the end of last year, I was starting to dabble a little bit in historical dressmaking and historical costuming just purely for my own interest. And I was doing a little bit of research a couple of weeks ago and I found out that there's an event in Melbourne called the Regency Picnic and it's held at a beautiful estate called Ripon Lee that's just absolutely stunning. If you've seen Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries, it's Aunt Prudence's house and it's just Oh, it's, it's just beautiful. But apparently there's this event here every year where everyone gets dressed up in Regency attire and goes and has this beautiful like picnic on the lawn at Ripon Lee and it's this afternoon event and it just sounds amazing. Now, if you know me at all, you'll know that I've been a diehard Jane Austen fan for years. I first read Pride and Prejudice when I was like, I think I was 12 and I've loved it ever, ever since. I mean, Sense and Sensibility is my favourite, but Austin Regency is just, oh, love it. So my husband Connor and I have decided that this is something that we want to do. We want to go to this picnic and have a super fun time. But what that means is that I need some Regency attire. I don't have any, so I need to make it all because obviously you can't just go to the shop now and buy a set of half stays and clocked stockings and empire waist long gowns and bonnets you, you, you just can't do that so I'm gonna be making what we're wearing Connor has also asked me to teach him to sew this year so I'm hoping to get him in on making some of his own stuff which will be really cool but I just wanted to share this process with you I think it'll be really exciting and we're gonna start with the base layer and work out so my first project is gonna be a shift I'm also gonna need stockings shoes stays, petticoat, a gown, a fichu, a cap, a bonnet. We're talking the whole kit and caboodle here. But today I'm going to start with my shift. So the pattern that I'm using is 8162 by Simplicity. It's an American Duchess pattern uh, that is primarily designed for Georgian attire. And if you can see just behind me here, I've made the false rump from this pattern and it's hanging on my wall, which is this view here. But we're going to actually be using just the shift pattern but I'm gonna be modifying it a little bit. So what I'm gonna be doing is, we're not doing either of the ruffles, and I'm shortening the sleeves quite significantly. The gown that I'm planning just has little short puff cap sleeves, and so obviously I don't want an elbow length sleeve that's gonna stick out past the sleeve of my gown. So the shape of this shift, the shape is fine for what I need, but I don't want the ruffles around the neckline and I don't want the long sleeve. So I'm just gonna omit those ruffles and shorten the sleeve and use this pattern. And I picked up this gorgeous cotton linen blend. It feels really lovely. It's like a like an unbleached kind of linen color. It, it's natural and it feels so just soft and squishy and it's all natural fibers, which is perfect because it'll help breathe because obviously you're wearing so many layers in Regency. In any period costume really there were just lots of layers but they were all natural fibers which means that you can breathe really easily. Your skin can breathe and your body can breathe so it's not as inclined to get too hot. Now this picnic is in April which in Melbourne could either be freezing or really really hot or pouring rain. So I may also end up making a Spencer once we get a little bit closer and I know what the weather's gonna be doing. But for now, we're gonna start with this shift. I have pre-washed and shrunk my fabric already because cotton and linen shrink a lot when you wash them and I don't want my finished garment to shrink. So I've already pre-washed my fabric. I'll get it pressed and then we'll get it cut out and get sewing. So stay tuned. I'm excited to share this with you. I began by cutting out all of the pieces of my shift, following the pattern on linen folded in half. I then marked all the circles and notches, using my fabric shears for the notches and an air erasable pen to mark the circles. Next, I needed to wind a bobbin before I began sewing. And I began by stitching the underarm gussets to the sleeve pieces and sewing the shoulder seams together.
I then flat felled the seams that I had sewn to enclose all of the raw edges. This is a historically accurate technique. I then went to my ironing board and pressed the pieces I had just sewn and pinned the sleeve to the shoulder seam, matching the center of the sleeve to the shoulder seam. I then sewed these together and ironed them open, pressing the seam allowance towards the shoulder. I then trimmed the seam allowance and pinned the longer side down to create a flat filled seam, which I sewed at the machine. Okay, so I've pinned the sides of my shift together and it's looking really big even though I cut to my measurements from the pattern. So I think what I'm going to do, obviously the neckline is supposed to be big because it gathers up with a drawstring. So I think what I'm going to do is seam up the side seams and sleeves but not fell them just yet and then pop the drawstring casing in so I can try the shift on and then I can take it in at the sides if I need to. I think that's my next plan of action. In order to fit my garment, I created the drawstring casing for the neckline. I did this by stitching the two pieces together with a flat felt seam, turning the raw ends inward and folding the casing in half. I then stitched this around the neckline of my shift and pressed it towards the inside of the garment before pinning it to stitch it down. Belle came to visit my sewing room while I was doing this. Belle is my ultimate sewing helper and she loves making nests in my patterns. I was so excited that she came to visit and just wanted to share her cuteness and loveliness with you all. You'll see her popping up a whole lot more. I then stitched the drawstring casing down one eighth of an inch from each edge of the casing, upper and lower. like I know I'm super lucky to have a whole sewing room all to myself but the problem is that it faces west and directly in front of me is a massive massive window and it gets so hot in here so I've literally just been sewing and I'm sweaty and gross I think I really need to just bring a fan in but then it blows the patterns around so I don't know it's just hot and not fun and I don't know how to solve it. If anyone out there is a home sewer and you have a solution for cooling your sewing room without blowing your pattern pieces and your garment pieces and everything all over the place, please comment below and tell me how you do it because I need some solutions and we're renting so we can't put aircon in. But any other solutions are greatly, greatly appreciated. So I think when I left you all yesterday, I had just added this drawstring casing to my shift because I wasn't sure whether it was going to be too big and I wanted to fit it. So last night after Connor got home from work, I ran this lovely white satin ribbon through the casing. As you can see now, it's pulled up around the neckline and I was able to put it on. It's way too big. It needs to be taken in quite a bit. There's a crease like a fold down the side here. And if you can see in there, there's some straight pins. I had Connor pin it down the side for me. So I'm gonna take it into where those pins are and taper it towards the underarm gusset. And when I cut the sleeves out, I had mentioned earlier that I wanted to shorten them, but I wasn't sure how much. So I cut them to the full length shown in the pattern and I've tried it on and I'm now gonna trim them down to the point of the underarm gusset as well. So I have a few modifications to make, but I will show you what we're looking like once they're done. Here I am marking the length of my sleeves using an L square and an air erasable marker. I repeated this for both sleeves and then trimmed the excess off. I then did the same thing for my side seams, following the pin markings and using a hip curve instead of an L square. I folded the shift in half and trimmed both sides together to make sure they were even. 
I pinned the cut edges together and sewed the new seam by machine. Trim the seam allowances for felling. Turned the wide seam allowance over the narrow one and pinned it in place. I returned to the sewing machine to stitch the felled seam in place. Next, I turned a narrow hem on the sleeves. I did this by eye and once the hem was the width I wanted it, I pinned it in place and sewed it on the machine. Last but not least, I needed to level the hem. To level the hem, I put my shift on my dress form and used the hem marker to place pins at the level I wanted my hem to be. I trimmed the excess to this point and marked two lines on my shift. I turned the hem using my iron and stitched it down by machine. So that's it, the shift is finished. I'm really happy with it. I'm happy with how it turned out. It was really easy to make because there's no real fitting issues other than the fact that I cut it too big and the length of the sleeves. But if you're a beginner, I definitely recommend this project. It's a really easy one to get started with. You can see the finished shift behind me just here. I'll pop it in frame for you so you can see the whole thing. So as you can see, I've shortened the sleeves here. <laughs> I've shortened the sleeves. There is the drawstring for the neck casing and there's the hem. It falls about knee length on me, just below my knees. So it's a really great length. It'll cover the tops of my stockings and help to keep me nice and warm, but also keep me cool in summer. That's part one of my Regency costume series complete. Next, we'll be moving on to a set of short stays. Please give me a like, and a comment if you've enjoyed this video and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see what happens next with my short stays. Thank you so much for sticking through this video and watching. I hope you've really enjoyed it and I'll see you again soon. Bye.